And you are an expert on the 1977 Corlares, what I guess could be considered an attack on Brazil, which I guess is a is a small town somewhere in Brazil. I saw you do an interview with George Knapp about it, but could you go into some detail about this Colares thing? I, I have a bunch of questions about it, but it seemed like they were actually taking blood samples from people and causing human harm in this in this uh, attack that seemed to go on for a little while. Yeah, that's correct. But uh, this this event, these attacks, uh, don't happen all in Colares. Colares is a city of the Pará state in the north of Brazil. We had more than two hundred thousand people that witnessed this lights in the skies, the, the vampire lights, the chupa chupa. And we have more than 2,000 people that were attacked by these UFOs, these UAPs, these machines. And all started, well, the, the great wave, let's say, started in 1977, where uh, people from uh, uh, Colaris, Macarena, uh, Belém, uh, some cities from Maranhão State in the northeast of Brazil, they were being attacked, the, the fishermen were being attacked by lights. And the people started to get in panic and asked for the mayor of the city to get help because something in the sky was shooting lasers on the people. In the, in, in the man in the leg and the woman up the, the breast or in the leg. So the many mayors started to, to get in touch with the Brazilian Air Force because it was it was in the sky is a Brazilian Air Force problem. And they started to investigate. And for the at the beginning they didn't believe. They they thought it was a, a panic or just a, a confusion, something like that. But then the Brazilian Air Force sent a, 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 a team, a mission that became called, that became uh, known as uh, Operation Plate, with the military personnel. They were there to investigate, to get uh, testimonies, to get information, and they get, and they got all of this, and they got photos, and they got film, and they got witness, and they got report, and they saw it. The lead of this team was. Captain, back the time, uh, Willis Holanda. He were he was very skeptical. He didn't believe in UFOs. But then, after that, he became one of the most important believer of the UFO in Brazil. And this big wave, let's let's call big wave, started in in September, ninety seven seven. Uh, until December 1977, and suddenly the mission was shut down. The, the Brazilian force, well, this nothing unusual. It was nothing strange. They had photos. The newspapers at the time had photos. People are still seen and been attacked by these UFOs. But the Brazilian Air force said, well. That's not uncommon. Something, uh, it's just a paranoia or, or imagine, imagination or people are creating something. And the mission was shut down. They ended the mission. As far as we know, the mission didn't stop. The mission stopped with the Brazilian military. In 1978, we had another mission, but the wave was not that big, there's no, there's no more attacks over there. Uh, but we know that when the, the mission was ended in 1977, we know that some, let's say, foreign people came to Colaris to grab evidences, photos, films, medical reports of the victims. And they were there in the Brazilian jungle. They were there 
to investigate as well what was happening. Did you say orange people or strange people? Strange people, foreign. Strange people, foreign, foreign, oh, foreign, 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 foreign people. From another, yeah, foreign oh, from another God, like men in black type people. Like agents from intelligence agencies in, in from, you know, the three letters, the, the, the country with, with three letters. Right, so you're saying that they came, they took photographic evidence that people may have taken of their wounds and stuff, anything that was collected and tried to to make the whole thing disappear. I understand there's a video that it has like 22 hours of footage of vehicles coming out of the water, out of the sky, lasers. Uh, how did you find out about this video? And is this one of the things that were, was taken or do you think it still exists somewhere? Well, the videos exist. They exist, but uh, we don't know where are the videos. We presume, we think, that the videos are out of Brazil. Well, we have we have some options. The first option, the Brazil is still kept in secret, these videos. The second option, the Brazilian just destroy it or miss it for some reason. They 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 don't know how to storage and miss it because almost 40 years now. Uh, the third, someone got it. Someone in Brazil got it and took it. And uh, another possibility is that this film was sent to the United States. Because we know that agents or intelligence, CIA, were here to investigate. And back at that time, in 1977, the Brazil was, uh, and, uh, the militaries were government, governing Brazil. So we have this 22 hours of videos that shows a perfect UFOs, that shows UFOs coming in, coming out of lagoons and rivers. If you go to north of Brazil, if you go to, 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 to jungle, the Amazon, the rivers of Brazil, in, in the north of Brazil, the rivers are so big that it looks like an ocean. You cannot see the other side of the river. It's the biggest rivers in the world are in Brazil. So these objects, the, the, the military filming these objects coming in and coming out of the rivers and crossing in, in the sky and stopping over the, the vigil that militaries did in the beach of Maita, for example. They, they make a camp there to watch. The UFOs just appeared over them, hovered and, and shooting uh, lasers and lights to the ground as they were searching for something. So the, the, the oppression plate, in my opinion, is the hardest evidence that we have in Brazil because we have the testimonies more than two. Hundred thousand of people saw it. We have documents, official documents. We have sorry, two hundred thousand of this one 1977 incident. Yes, what? two hundred thousand wow, so people in four okay. months saw it. They were witness of this objects, the vampire lights, the chupa chupa. Because why chupa chupa? Because this light suck blood. From people. And how we know that they suck blood? Because when people went to the, the doctor, the hospital, to make exams, and they discover that people got anemia. All the people got anemia when they got hit by the, by the lights. And they were they, they are suffering of a lack of iron in their blood. So why why they have a, a technology? Extraterrestrial technology or, or, or uh, uh, spy technology would like to take blood samples from the victims. We don't know. 
And someone saying uh, that they, how do we know it's aliens? Well, you're not necessarily saying it's aliens. It, it could be due to the technology that you're seeing, considering this was 1977. Yeah, we can I, say that it's, it's because the, the technology, the way they, they fly, they can fly in the sky, dive in, in the river, in the ocean, and then get out again. The same maneuver, the same uh, easy maneuver, they don't make. We don't have an, an airplane that can fly in the sky, fly in the sky, dive in the ocean, perform the same speed under the water. And in the sky, we don't have it. And if it was a technology from the United States, from the former Soviet Union, China, China doesn't exist in 1977. It's a, it's a poor country. It's a rural country. Uh, 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 England, France, I don't know. Why, wh where are this technology now? We don't have it. We saw some videos that Jeremy Corbell put in their Instagram and their website. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a ship of the United States that they recorded an object that was in the sky and dived in the ocean. The same thing. But we are talking about something that happened in 1977. So what, what this technology? And Luis Elizondo, who recently put out the book Imminent, talked about this incident. Is that because the United States studied it and he would have studied this this particular 1977 incident as part of his job as uh, head of the Pentagon's UFO program for a time? Well, I read the, the book. Uh, uh, it is on this book I read already. already and uh, chapter two talks about Colaris. And, uh, but uh, Elizondo was very superficial about this incident. He, he just met General uh, Ushua, son, that was the general Ushua father, and he met the general Ushua son. Uh, the both generals, son and father, they loved the ufology. General Ushua was an icon in the Brazilian ufology because he was from the, the army, and for the first time, he, he took the subject inside the army circle. They could speak, and he speak with the, the people from the Air Force, the Army, and the Navy. And Elizondo just, just in the, in his book, he just gave a glimpse of uh, was about Operation Plate. He never got he he didn't get the detail. He didn't he didn't tell detail about what happened in Colaris. I'm writing a book. I'm finishing to write a book about Colaris with information that no one has outside of Brazil and some information that even in Brazil are unknown. So uh, what, 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 what Elizondo brought was to put Colaris again in a spotlight. And I was there in February, in, in January, I was there with George Knapp. We were there. To, to shoot an a episode of the, his documentary, but, uh, Netflix documentary, series documentary. They're going to be released on November 8th uh, on Netflix. And I was there with him. And we investigate some new cases in, in Colaris and Barcarena. And we spoke with two, of, we spoke with three of the most important characters of the Chupa Chupa, the Operation Plague, in back 97.7. I may have to get Netflix to watch that. As far as this whole uh, Kalara situation, it didn't come out public till like 25 years later. Was that because of declassified military documents or how did, how did this come out? Was it just with the internet and news traveling more or what's the reason? No, the 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 the, the Chupa Chupa case, the Chupa Chupa phenomenon, uh, was new from the beginning, but only was published. There were no uh, by people in that area in the north of Brazil, because the newspaper from Pará and Maranhão State, they wanted to publish something. 
and then this not got uh, this this phenomenon did, didn't get uh, a, a national wide uh, uh, information, just regional on that area. And then Bob Pratt came to Brazil, the researcher Bobby Pratt came to Brazil and started to research some cases and he discovered this more information about this case. But mainly, mainly investigation journalists in, in Pará and Maranhão, they are still, they were, they were researching the case, investigating the case. Only in 1997, 1997, 20 years later, was when Captain Holanda, now uh, Colonel Wiranje Holanda, he spoke, he called it to A.J. Jevar, the editor of the Revista UFO, he passed away in 2022, uh, and Marco Antonio Pelli, Petit. He called it to, to, to A.J. And, and told him, well, I have documents and I have information about the operation plate because I was there, I was the leader of this, this mission, and I wanted to speak. And then he spoke a lot of things and showed many of the documents that until that time was still secret. And he gave us a lot of documents. And with this, with document in hand, we had the possibility to argue the Brazilian government and well, well, I have this document. I want more. And in 2005, the Revista of Magazine and the Brazilian Commission of Ophologists, we started a campaign called UFO Information of UFO, U, Information of UFOs Now. And so far, since 2005, we have more than 2,500 of documents, photos, and videos that uh, released disclosure to the Brazilian people. You can find all these documents in the Brazilian National Archives. So, yeah, many people knew about this, what happened in 1977. But the Brazil and the world just got knowledge about this 20 years later. For the sucking of the blood, did I understand correctly that people could have been inside their houses, lying in their beds, and these lasers would go right through the house, through the walls or the roof, and suck the blood out of them, even through through the roof? This is amazing. This is amazing. What kind of technology is that? Many of the victims were laid in their beds or in the nets, slipping. And uh, the UFO just hover over the house and shut a laser beam that crossed the ceiling, but not breaking the ceiling. The ray goes through the ceiling and hit the people and the, the, the woman over the breast and the man in the neck or in the leg. And many of the victims, when they feel it, they feel a kind of hit, and like a needle was pinching the skin many times. Pinching, pinching, pinching the skin many times. And the way they look up, the ceiling was translucent, transparent, like there was no ceiling. So they could see the light. They could see the, the vehicle. They could see the, the aircraft, whatever. So there's no way to escape. The, the, the people of the many villages, many cities, were so afraid that 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., they shut down the windows, the doors, no one in the street. Many people run to the church in Colaris, and only the men stood out with the fireworks, guns, and, and, and plates to make noise to avoid the UFOs. But uh, they, 
it's not always they got the success because the UFO just appeared and hit the people and suck the blood. Did anybody die from the, that incident or what would have been the worst injury? Yeah, uh, officially we have one, one, one people, one, one uh, lady that died after the contact, that, after being hit by, by the laser beam because she had, she had some problems, uh, health problems, and this helped her to die, to help her uh, uh, to disease. But uh, not officially, we have two more people that died because of the tax. But when you have to, when you had the opportunity to go, have the opportunity to go to come to Brazil to the north of Brazil, you're gonna figure out that the north of Brazil is big. The Amazon is huge, huge. This forest is huge. It's bigger than many countries in Europe many countries in the world so if you live in a city for example if you live in Barcarena and they, you want to go to Belém the capital of Pará Barcarena is a city and Belém is the capital of Pará you have to take three hours by car and one hour and a half by ferry so I'm telling you that because I was there in January it was the time we had we, we take to get to the cities. Now wonder in ninety seven seven, no streets. The streets of people that live there are the rivers. So this phenomena, the chupa chupa, if they didn't not attack only great big cities, they attack it inner the country, inner the state, cities that was very far from each other. So we believe that many people were attacked and we believe that many people, more than 2,100, 200,000 people that saw it, saw and we don't have this information and probably Many more people died because they have no time to go to the hospital. They have no time to look for help. And, and, and they have no uh, uh, information of what to do. So we, we, yes, yeah, so we believe that many people, uh, more people must die because of the tax.